in 1977, two spacecrafts named Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 were launched into space on a daring mission to conduct close-up studies of Jupiter and Saturn, Saturn's rings and the larger moons of the two planets. More than four and a half decades later, Voyager 2 is more than 12 billion miles from Earth. Venturing into interstellar space and using its five science instruments to unlock the secrets of the universe that lies beyond our solar system. But with age comes a new set of challenges, even for instruments, which includes a diminishing power supply that threatens to shut down the spacecraft's vital instruments. To prevent this from happening, the Voyager team has taken a bold step to use a small reservoir of backup power, which was set aside as part of an onboard safety mechanism. This decision will allow Voyager 2 to postpone shutting down one of its science instruments until 2026, rather than this year. The Voyager probes are powered by radioisotope thermoelectric generators that convert heat from decaying plutonium into electricity. As the generators decay over time, they produce less power each year, threatening the operation of the spacecraft's vital instruments. To compensate for the loss, engineers have turned off heaters and other systems that are not essential to keeping the spacecraft flying. With those options now exhausted on Voyager 2, the team had to find a new solution to keep the instruments operating. But as Voyager 2 ventures deeper into the unknown regions of interstellar space, the data it collects will help scientists answer fundamental questions about the shape of the heliosphere and its role in protecting Earth from the energetic particles and other radiation found in the interstellar environment. If the new approach works well for Voyager 2, the team may implement it on Voyager 1 as well, ensuring that these intrepid spacecraft continue to explore the mysteries of the universe for a few more years to come. Meanwhile, an alien hunting telescope has picked up a faint and interesting signal from Voyager 1. Yes, you heard that right. Refurbished only last year, the Allen Telescope Array in California is a radio telescope array dedicated to astronomical observations and a simultaneous search for extraterrestrial intelligence. And it came as a surprise when the otter detected signal from the Voyager 1 probe, which is currently at the outer edges of the solar system, way beyond the orbit of Pluto. The telescope array made contact with the Voyager 1 probe on July 9, using 20 of its 42 dish antennas, which are each over 20 feet wide. It's fascinating to note that the signal traversed a distance of more than 150 times the distance of the Earth to the Sun, and the telescope recorded 15 minutes of data, which were stored on a disk. However, it is interesting to note that the statement didn't provide any additional information about the signal it caught. But we do understand that at some 14.6 billion miles from Earth, and out into the interstellar medium, things can go wrong with limited to no human intervention to save the day. Add to that, the Voyagers are 45 years old now, having been launched in the 1970s. That's why when Voyager 1 started to send home some gobbled nonsense, instead of telemetry data in May 2022, NASA started working on a remote diagnosis and fix. Now, some months later, they are triumphant. Voyager 1 is back online and communicating perfectly, with ground control as if it never happened. In fact, the fix turned out to be relatively simple for NASA sitting billions of miles away from the spacecraft. But, the spacecraft came back online with a new mystery. In mid-May, Voyager 1 onboard system, responsible for keeping its high-gain antenna pointed at Earth, known as the Attitude Articulation and Control System, or AACS, started beaming home confusing jumbles of data instead of the usual reports about the spacecraft's health and status. From our viewpoint, it appeared as if the spacecraft had developed something like an electronic version of a phase-era condition that causes the loss of fluent speech. 
the data may appear to be randomly generated or does not reflect any possible state the AACS could be in, explained NASA in a statement from the time. Even more baffling for engineers, Voyager 1 appeared to be in perfect condition despite the spacecraft's bizarre status reports. The radio signal from the ship remained strong and steady, which meant the antenna was still pointed at Earth and not in whatever configuration the AACS was claiming it was into NASA in the reports. Similarly, Voyager 1 science systems kept gathering and transmitting data as usual, without any of the same strangeness affecting the AACS, and whatever was wrong with the AACS didn't trip a fault protection system designed to put the spacecraft in safe mode when there's a glitch. Thankfully, NASA engineers diagnosed the problem, and with the diagnosis, they could employ a cure. It turned out that the AACS had started sending its telemetry data via an onboard computer that had stopped working years ago. The dead computer corrupted all the outgoing data. All NASA engineers had to do was send the command to the AACS to use the correct computer to send its data home. The next challenge will be to figure out exactly what caused the AACS to switch computers in the first place. NASA says the system probably received a faulty command from another onboard computer. While they say it is not a major concern for Voyager 1 well-being right now, the true culprit will need to be found and fixed to prevent future weirdness. For the last decade, Voyager 1 has been cruising in interstellar space beyond the reach of our sun's magnetic field. The field had offered the craft a little protection from cosmic rays and other interstellar radiation, much as Earth's magnetic field offers some protection from high-energy particles and radiation from the Sun. Cosmic rays are known to interfere with electronics here on Earth when one of those high-speed energetic particles strikes a computer chip. It can cause small memory errors, which add up over time, and it's reasonable to expect that to be an issue for Voyager 1 on board computers too. A mystery like this is sort of par for the course at this stage of the Voyager mission said Voyager 1 and to project manager, Susan Dodd, in a statement dated 2 May. The spacecraft are both almost 45 years old, which is far beyond what the mission planners anticipated. We're also in interstellar space, a high radiation environment that no spacecraft have flown in before. We'll need to wait and see what new perils encounter Voyager next on its travels and what new discoveries await. Looking back, it's been 45 years since NASA's Voyager spacecrafts blasted off from Earth, but the twin explorers still call home from billions of miles away. We do the hello, are you okay call once a week, said Suzanne. The check-ins give Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 a chance to share their exact locations on the other side of the heliosphere, a distant region of the solar system whose magnetic field shields Earth and the other planets from galactic cosmic rays. It was during one of these calls in May that Voyager 1 sent a perplexing signal. Data from the computer that controls its orientation came back in jumbled bits, jumbled ones and zeros, and it continued to look like gibberish. It's like the check engine light turned on, added Bruce Wagoner, a JPL engineer who oversees the operations of the Voyager missions. We could not isolate it to a specific area. This computer is critical because it keeps Voyager 1 communication antenna pointed firmly in Earth's direction. Any malfunction or loss of power would cut off humanity's longest distance phone call forever. Voyager 1 is now so far away that it takes almost 22 hours for transmissions from the craft to reach us, traveling at the speed of light. They are worth waiting for. The dispatches include valuable scientific data about interstellar magnetic fields, 
cosmic rays and plasma waves. Transmissions from the Voyagers are received by the Deep Space Network, a trio of colossal radio antennas in California's Mojave Desert, Australia and Spain. They are spread out across the globe to ensure at least one of them can be aimed at any point in the sky. All three sites have a 230-foot antenna built specifically to listen to the Voyagers. The farther they go, the harder they are to hear. The Voyagers' radios transmit signals at a mere 23 watts of power. By the time those signals reach Earth, they are reduced to the faintest of whispers, just one billionth of a watt. The spacecraft are getting weaker too. Every year their batteries lose up to 4 watts of power. Due to the decay of plutonium-238, the radioisotope that fuels them. Survival is a series of trade-offs. With a finite source of energy, what can be sacrificed and what can be preserved. And as for the sudden hijack of its computers, why Voyager 1 made the switch in the first place is still a mystery, and one worth solving, since it suggests something else isn't quite right aboard the spacecraft. What do you guys have to say? Drop in your comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to Lab360, because together, we will explore.